refugees that were sent to Afghanistan. I was so upset that I cannot tell you how, how disgusted, how upset, how, how angry I really was about what happened. I could not believe that actually a, a, a neighbor of ours, a neighbor of any neighbor, especially a neighbor like Pakistan, for God's sakes, you know, they can do something like that to Afghanistan at the time of, it's not like Pakistan does not know where Afghanistan is. They have a hand in bringing everything that it is happening in Afghanistan. They all have a hand and they had a hand from the beginning. So, you know, they know it. And here we are, you know, with the Taliban, with the way our economy is, with the way the whole situation is, with the way, and then sending hundreds and thousands of refugees that were legally supposed to be in Pakistan, most of them. And they live their lives there. And they have their children that have gone to school. And they have a life there. And they made a life for themselves. And, and, and send them back to Afghanistan. And, and, as, and as you all know, that Afghanistan was not ready because the United Nations was not ready to, to, you know, to help these refugees the way they were supposed to, to kind of re reestablish them in Afghanistan and give them the, the assistance that they needed. And then having a, you know, a government in Afghanistan that although, I mean, um, maybe they are trying, maybe they are not, because that's also one of those things that is not very clear to us. That the, uh, you know, for, for reestablishing them and reestablishing them in, in, in Afghanistan. Uh, but I don't know whether they really care deeply. Or not. I don't think, I don't think so. So right now we are kind of living in a world, including my country, that the, not the people of the country, because this is what I'm doing. I'm trying to separate the, the beings, the, the, the people of each country, like the Pakistanis from the Pakistan government, like Hindustanis from the Hindustan government, like the US, the Americans, like the, from the American government. I, I'm trying to separate all of this, honestly, because if I don't separate, if I don't in my mind, then this world is not, is not that place for any human being to be living in anymore. We are in a very bad place. Things are happening in such a way that, that you know, we are going towards a complete chaos and we are going, and we are giving ourselves to this chaos and we are letting it take over our lives. And, and that is, you know, with what's happening in Gaza, for example. And that, that is horrible, it's, 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 it's terrible. And the whole thing, the way it happened in Afghanistan, all. Kind of a, a reaction from the Pakistani people. That's why I love Asma Jahangir's gatherings, because that's what actually brings these questions to, to its point and brings it to the people and says, you know, this is the kind of a questions that the people of Pakistan should be asking the government. You know, that what, what is going on? Why are we doing this? But, and I'm glad that I heard that from all of you. Uh, I don't think you have any answer for us, and I don't believe that we have any answer to give. But um, here we are. You know the situation much better. There is no point for me to give you numbers. There is no point for me to tell you how miserable everybody is. There is no point to tell for me to tell you how how terrible the whole situation is in this country now, with all of the refugees coming and how their lives are and how how they are trying to cope and they really cannot and it's really hard and they are doing their best and oh my gosh, it's like. Um, I don't know how many of them I'm supposed to be talking about it and how much, and if I give you numbers, will that make it any different? To me, it doesn't because it's a, it's hundreds and thousands of, of, of humanity and human beings going through absolutely a miserable time because some governments, they decide to do what they decide to do. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Mehbubha Jan, thank you very much. That was a really heartfelt appeal to the Pakistani people to support 
the presence of Afghan refugees uh, in Pakistan. I'm going to ask now the deputy representative of uh, UN, U, UNHCR, uh, the Human Rights uh, um, Commission, to come to speak, please. For, and I'd like to remind everyone that you only have five minutes each. We have a long list of speakers, and we want to get everyone in. So UN, UNHCR representative. I'm honored to be on this panel. Um, in a word, uh, in a word where millions of people are fueled from their, are displaced from their houses due to old and new conflicts, and where refugees are being labeled as burden, as terrorist, where political uh, solution are in short supply, we need voices and I appreciate and acknowledge and um, pay tribute to all the voices who are expressing their views, who are speaking out for refugee rights across the world. Um, I would like to appreciate and acknowledge the people and government of Pakistan for hosting Afghan refugees for the last 40 years. And despite the fact that Pakistan is not signatory to the 1951 Refugee Convention and its protocol, still the people and the government, they have, they have supported Afghan refugees. And there are challenges, their own economic challenges, their own issues in Pakistan, but still. And we are appealing, we are appealing to the government to continue to provide this support to Afghan refugees who are living here we have basically different types of, uh, different categories of Afghan refugees in Pakistan. The one who are holding proof of registration cards, POR cards, who are well, like, there are 1.3 million Afghan refugees, they are living here. And then there are some 800,000 people who are holding Afghan citizen cards in Pakistan. And they were registered in 2017. In 2021, um, after the developments in Afghanistan, according to government estimates, some 600,000 people came to Pakistan and they, they are living here. And last, uh, last, last, uh, last week, uh, last month, the government uh, initiated this plan to, uh, to ask Afghan refugees and the asylum seeker to go back to Afghanistan. And we actually opposed that plan. And we actually expressed our concern that nobody leave their house by choice. They are compelled, they are living here, and we need to continue to provide our support to these people because they need our su support. And we need to see these people through a humanitarian lens rather than a political lens because they are the victim of war and they are not the perpetrators. They are here, they, have, they, are, they are seeking asylum in Pakistan. So that's why we have proposed, we have been asking the government to, to come up with a plan, with a comprehensive plan to register these asylum seekers in Pakistan. But the government is not supportive of accepting new people in Pakistan. And we have provided, thank you. So we have asked the government that we are ready to support, uh, to provide technical support to uh, provide uh, financial support to the government so that we can register these people. And uh, because the situation in Afghanistan is not satisfactory, um, it is imperative. Uh, the state has the right to regulate its laws, to implement its laws, to regulate its border. But keeping in view the situation in Afghanistan, uh, the humanitarian human rights situation in Afghanistan, particularly related to girls and women, they cannot, these people cannot go back to Afghanistan. We should not be sending these people, um, if their lives are at, or freedom are, ex, are at stake in Afghanistan or at risk in Afghanistan. So we are asking the government, we are appealing to the government to, 
continue to provide support to these people. Um, otherwise, it would be uh, it would be very risky for them. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to ask now uh, Patricia Grossman, who's online behind me. I hope uh, she's uh, Associated Director Human Rights Watch in New York. She's been concerned with the Afghan situation ever since I can remember, uh, which is at least 40 years ago, uh, at the time of the Soviet invasion. Um, she's been a stalwart a defender of Afghan people's rights, and we are very fortunate to have her. Patricia, go ahead. You've got five minutes. Thank you very much, Hamid, and it's very nice to be um, here today. Thanks for the invitation. It's good to be connected with old friends. Um, I'd like to start with just saying that, um, you know, this isn't the first time we've seen this happen to Afghan refugees in Pakistan. Um, it's a, a cyclical thing. And in 2016, we saw almost the same numbers we're seeing now. Uh, people coerced uh, to leave for, for Afghanistan uh, by many of the same means we're seeing now. Now it looks like the numbers may go much higher. And I'm very careful here not to say returned to Afghanistan, because in many cases, well, that's true for some, many cases of the people being forced to leave include Afghans that were actually born in Pakistan, who've lived their entire lives there, who built their lives there, and are now being coerced to leave through a whole range of abuses, uh, detention, seizures of the property, uh, beatings and so on. And if you look at the um, the figures that come out from the updates from IOM and UNHCR, something like 90% report that fear of detention is the reason they're leaving. And of course, once that begins, then others feel the same fear and you end up with this uh, an exodus of people who are then leaving for, um, as Abubakar Saraj pointed out, in a country where the economic situation is already in crisis. Um, people arriving and are, are not able to take much money or property with them because of the, the way the Pakistani authorities prevent that. And so then arrive destitute and uh, in, a, in a situation where already there aren't jobs, there aren't ways for people to make much of an income going to villages where maybe they originated many, many years ago, but have very little. So we're adding to an already very um, catastrophic humanitarian situation in Afghanistan, not to mention, of course, it's already been said, uh, those le leaving for Afghanistan include families with girls who may have been in school in Pakistan who now will not have that opportunity in Afghanistan, women who may have been working or in university who not, will not be able to do so in Afghanistan. So it is really a, an unprecedented crisis. But I also want to point out that one of the reasons it's very difficult um, within the international community to put pressure on Pakistan in this regard, is that other countries have also behaved just abysmally toward Afghan refugees. Many promises were made in Europe, in the, in the US, to take in Afghans, particularly, of course, after the Taliban takeover. And we've seen, really, that those promises have not been met. I could point particularly to, say, Germany. At one point, we're saying they would be bringing in a 1,000 Afghans a month. They've fallen so far short of that, and, and including many Afghans who are particularly at risk, journalists, human rights defenders, and the rest, who end up now, I know many, still stuck either in Afghanistan or in Pakistan in desperate circumstances and unable to find any safe pathways to resettlement elsewhere, despite all the promises by donor countries who supported all these efforts in Afghanistan over the last 22 years. Um, so I, I'm going to keep it very short because I'm aware of the five minutes, but I would say that you know, we have a complex humanitarian crisis now, both the abuses on the Pakistani border side, the failure of other countries to respond adequately, and of course the situation in Afghanistan with the Taliban repression, making many of these people coming to Afghanistan now, returnees and others, at risk. Um, and also at risk because of a very dire economic situation. So it really it needs an urgent response that we're not yet seeing from, from countries, concerned countries who should be stepping up. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very Patricia. much, Patricia. That is uh, very well put. It, it's really sad that wherever we look on this issue of Afghan refugees, it's a story of, of pity and um, uh, in, in incredible frustration and anger 
at the fact that after so many years, the international community has virtually um, abandoned Af uh, Afghan civil population uh, and is not being able to fulfill their needs. We do understand that there are other uh, phenomenon going on, <coughs> Gaza, Ukraine, and uh, Sudan, and many other places. But this, this does deserve more, perhaps from the more wealthiest part of the globe. 